Hello, St. Michael, Resurrection and St. Anne Parishes. This is this week's Quick Things, a review of parish news and a few other observations. So a reminder, it's called Quick Things and maybe we'll change the name at some point. Uh, the quick things are the initial announcements. And then after that, it's not always very quick, but you know, stay with it as long as you can. That's what I've always told people who have said it's not very quick. Well, the beginning is fairly quick. And so in that regard, um, the thumbnail for this week's video is um, inside, I think the inside two or second or third pages of the new Eastside Parishes directory, which I have handy here, right here, which Father Al and I, as I said at Mass this weekend, are very happy to have. And it's a neat um, uh, spread of the various directory covers uh, for the parish directories over the years, since 1935. It also shows the heritage or the legacy of Eastside parishes, the first directory in 1935 from St. Mary's, St. James, um, maybe all their prior directories that were lost along the way that aren't included here was a nice way to kind of just see where we've come, but a directory always leads us ahead. And so that's the good thing as well. So the directories for Eastside parishes, lots of people lined up on after masses on the weekend to pick up their copies. Um, if you didn't get your copy, they'll be available at Masses this weekend, or you can stop in the office during regular hours to pick up a copy of the directory. So this is for folks who had their pictures taken. There's a complimentary directory. Um, otherwise, you can purchase a directory at the office during the week, um, but not on Sundays just because the people handing out directories won't have money to, um, you know, to pay for, for change and things like that. Also, um, so just keep it handy. It's a great way to kind of identify folks, remember names. Um, that's how Father Al, that's how, why it will be so beneficial to Father Al and I as we uh, get established um, at St. Michael and Resurrection. Thanks to those people who are pictured in the directory. Um, you know, it takes a little bit of sacrifice to come in, uh, to break away from the routine, maybe get dressed up a little bit. Um, but hopefully for the well-being of the community and that it was worth it. And some of you hopefully found some nice portraits that you were able to purchase and give as gifts or display in your home. So there are some other benefits to this. Now, St. Anne's folks, the pastoral council uh, decided last spring that um, we need a new directory. The last one was in the, in the early 2000s at some point. Um, so that those directory portraits will be taken in November. Uh, prior to that, we need to get organized. So we'll need people to assist with communication and with hospitality in regard to the directory, preparing for the directory, welcoming people as they have their portraits taken. So if you'd be willing to help with some of that communication and hospitality, uh, respond to the Quick Things email or contact me and we will get that on track. There's gonna be a meeting in late August to kind of do some initial planning for the St. Anne directory. But Eastside Parish folks, please pick up your directory and enjoy it. I mentioned at Mass, uh, at the other, just a couple other quick announcements. Um, St. Anne's has a golf outing coming up on August 25th. It will be at the Pine Valley Golf Course that includes golfing during the day and dinner. Uh, there's information um, online. So there's a link in the email to that. Eastside Parish members, this is not an ex golfing is not an exclusive sport. Um, you're welcome to join the fun as well. There's a link on both the Eastside Parish email and in the St. Anne email. This is uh, Vacation Bible Camp Week, so lots of energy happening around that. Um, also, uh, we have just completed uh, a youth mission trip to um, South Dakota. Uh, student or young people from both all three of our parishes were part of that. Also, uh, for the first time, there will be uh, young people coming from pretty much well a diverse part of the private, primarily the Midwest, uh, coming to Wausau next week. Group Mission Trips is a national organization. Um, parishes, other youth organizations connect with them to bring young people together for a week of. Uh, prayer, worship, service, and that will be happening here in Wausau next week. There'll be 176 uh, young people from Illinois, Iowa, Minnesota, Missouri, South Dakota, and Wisconsin uh, who will be part of that. So you may see them around town. There's a link in the email to a story that Channel 9 did 
about the group mission trip coming to Wausau. So check that out. And we'll pray for their success as they gather in these days. The, the, the synod um, that Pope Francis has called um, began with meetings in parishes a couple of years ago. Uh, we had meetings in our parishes, and I'll be addressing that more in upcoming bulletin columns and quick things conversations. But in the meantime, there's going to be an international uh, kind of an informational meeting for people about the synod coming up on Wednesday. I'm going to put a link that will hopefully be able, you'll be able to connect to that gathering on Wednesday to, if you're interested in learning more about the Synod at this point. But as I said, we'll talk more about the Synod. It's kind of interesting in that there are some um, aspects of some places in the church, groups, entities, whatever in the church, where the Synod is just a front burner, all they're talking about, thinking about. And then there are others where people don't have never heard of it and aren't talking about it at all. Well, I want us to be in that first group um, for the next few months. Certainly, that's, I think, where Pope Francis envisions for the church. And so we'll begin moving in that direction. Again, a link in the email to an international in English presentation or conversation about the synod that is in the email. I think that takes care of the main announcements. I wanted to uh, kind of a follow up to Sunday's homily about the sower. Um, I, I drive to Marshfield quite regularly to see my parents and I was on the road on Monday. And it was remarkable after our rains of the past week, how much the corn has grown. I would say it's double in height and uh, the field, fields that were looking pretty withered and threatened are looking vibrant. If we'd had a little more warm weather, my dad said they'd be even higher, the corn would be even higher. They'd, you'd see um, uh, tassels and maybe ears taking shape. So maybe some, we've had our rain, we've prayed for rain, we've sung rain down. Um, now we need, we still need some more rain probably, but we also need some warmer weather to help that corn grow. Last week I talked about, I shared some observations of um, John Allen and a few others regarding similarities between Catholicism and baseball. Um, a parishioner, Mary, Mary Kay Blomquist, sent um, some other observations. She came up with a few more that I want to share. So I mentioned that there are Padres and Cardinals in baseball. Well, she said, of course, there are also angels. So you don't want to forget that. Um, we doubt we have sprinkling rites where people are, are sprinkled with holy water. Well, certainly at the end of a big game, uh, there's a sprinkling rite of, part, of sorts with a, with a big cooler of Gatorade. Um, Oftentimes a priest will hit a home run with his homily, she observes, but then sometimes they strike out as well. So it works both ways. Um, oh, she talks about a change up in, I, I would say it's a, we ch they, they change pitchers in baseball uh, sometimes. And that happens in parishes, kind of maybe something similar to what's happened among us in recent days, uh, a pitcher change of sorts. She talks about a, in baseball, there's a seven, seventh inning stretch, uh, comparing that to we stand up after the Eucharistic prayer, we have the Our Father, the sign of peace, uh, we, we move around to receive communion, and then we pretty soon it's the end of the game, or the end of mass, and we depart. And then finally, uh, in the church or in religion, we have a, a, a commandment, thou shall not steal, whereas in baseball, stealing is encouraged as long as you get away with it. A few other things um, at the in the email is included a link to a video featuring a the Finnish the Finland's Minister for European Affairs. His name is Anders Adlerkreitz, and he recently recorded a video in which he is playing a Ukrainian uh, uh, patriotic march on a cello. It was to mark the 500th day of the Russian invasion of Ukraine. It reminded me of a story back during the war in Sarajevo um, and um, a, a cellist um, in the community came out one day, uh, like in the middle of the day and started playing his cello. And he did it every day, even when there was bombing and other things going on, he would come out and play his cello as kind of this resolute you know, stance against the war. He was going to provide something beautiful in the midst of this horror. And um, this, this image of the Finnish 
um, government official playing his cello reminded me of that. So I'd encourage you to just take a few moments, maybe use that as a time to pray for peace in Ukraine and that that horrible conflict can somehow miraculously be resolved. I talked at mass, encouraged, or just to, to make mention of the um, now the opportunity to watch The Chosen on regular TV. As I mentioned, it's on the CW, which you can find in various places, antenna TV, cable, um, dish, if you have dish TV, you can find it somewhere in the early numbers on those services. Just a word about it. So The Chosen began three years ago. They're currently finishing filming uh, season four, which now is being impacted by the actor's strike. Um, even, even the making of the story of Jesus is imp impacted by this strike. But it's gotten some really positive affirmations, some critical acclaim, a lot of appreciation among people who have watched it. So as I said, it's the this, this story of the life and ministry of Jesus, but it's told in a very creative manner. So it is not scripturally accurate necessarily. They have embellished scripture. They've added backstory to the disciples and to others. Um, and it's guided by theologians, scripture experts from various denominations, including the Catholic Church. Uh, so they're, they're, they, they hold true to the essential elements of the story and then and kind of elaborate or are creative in, in building upon that. Uh, and so it's 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 something that's readily available now, even on free TV. I'm including in the email a link to the website. So Angel Studios are the people who have produced The Chosen. And it's available for free online. And of course, it's free on free TV as well. Um, and you can watch all the episodes for the first three seasons. You can sit down and watch them all at one time if you wanted. I don't know if you want to binge the story of Jesus that way, but you could. Um, and so it's available online. You can easily access it there. They'd like you to download their app on your phone or your tablet or whatever, but you don't have to do that. You can just watch it online. Very easy to access. Uh, plug your computer into your TV and you can watch it on a bigger screen. Uh, and so, I, I mean, I, I, I find it a, a, a rewarding program. I was really, I mean, very, and very creative. So they begin um, in the first episode, one of the first people, if not the first people, we, we meet Jesus, and one of the first people he encounters is Mary Magdalene, which, if you think about the, how the, the trajectory of the story, who is the first person who encounters the risen Lord? And here in The Chosen, Mary Magdalene is the first person to encounter the human Lord Jesus as he begins his ministry. So it's kind of a, a neat little foreshadowing there. Um, the Angel Studios is also the force behind the, the big box office movie of the, of the summer, Sound of Freedom, which is a story about uh, the, the threat of human, the tragedy of human trafficking with a very clear element of faith as well. Um, Sound of Freedom last week was second in the box office in terms of revenue profits uh, following Mission Impossible. So it's done better than Indiana Jones. Um, again, produced by the same company that has done The Chosen. Uh, one of the things that they are encouraging with Sound of Freedom is that you would pay forward and you would pay for tickets of people to come and see the movie uh, going ahead of you or lay behind you. So you kind of, I'm not sure how that works. You can find more information at the Angel Studio website about it, but good things are coming out of that studio. Again, Sound of Freedom has gotten great, good reviews. The New York Times, um, Catholic publications as well. So um, some good things to, for entertainment purposes during these months of summer. And of course the chosen far beyond summer as well. Speaking of Mary Magdalene, I think that brings us to the end. She is one of the summer saints we celebrate in the upcoming week. Uh, a year ago, or a couple, maybe now it's been a little over a year ago, Pope Francis raised the rank of the of the day that's dedicated to Mary Magdalene. So we have we have optional memorials, we have memorials, we have feasts, and we have solemnities. And Pope Francis raised the rate. <laughs> of the day dedicated to Mary Magdalene from a memorial to a feast. All of the other apostles 
um, have our feasts, like the Feast of St. Thomas, the Feast of St. Simon and Jude. All of them are feasts except Peter and Paul, which are is a solemnity. And so guided by that, he raised the Feast of Mary Magdalene, or the Day of Mary Magdalene, to a feast as well because she is identified as the apostle to the apostles going back to their resurrection, a situation that I mentioned earlier, she was the one who took the good news to the people. And so Pope Francis reasoning that she should be recognized in the same prominent, with the same prominence and, and stature as the other apostles. Uh, Father James Martin in his excellent weekly uh, faith sharing Bible study uh, gathering on Facebook, uh, referred to it as the solemnity of St. Mary Magdalene, uh, which was a mistake, but also um, telling in that maybe it warrants that. I mean, if she was the first to encounter the risen Lord and she was the one who went and told the others uh, that Christ had risen, maybe that is worthy of a solemnity. In any case, that feast is celebrated on Saturday. Uh, because it's on a Saturday, we don't really have, we don't have mass on Saturday, unfortunately at least a Saturday Mass, we have Sunday Masses that we celebrate later on Saturday. So we don't really celebrate the Feast of St. Mary Magdalene this year, but hopefully will some year soon. Our closing prayer will be the collect for Mass for that Feast of St. Mary Magdalene. Also, two saints that, kind of, that, that hit closer to home, um, the Feast of Saints Joachim and Anne is celebrated on July 26th, but as a parish dedicated to St. Anne, with St. Anne, the mother of Mary as its patron, St. Anne Parish will celebrate that feast or a solemnity of St. Anne at this coming weekend's masses. Another important saint to our communities is that of St. James. Um, the resurrection, the Church of the Resurrection is located in what was uh, St. James Church, and there's complicated history of all that. We don't need to get into that now, but we certainly uh, look to the tradition of that parish and that beautiful church and um, the apostle St. James, who is the patron of all that in his feast is celebrated on July 25th, which we will celebrate um, at the church, at the Church of the Resurrection in, in the Church of St. James. So uh, join us for that if you're able at 1210 on July 25th. So we remember those saints and um, we celebrate the summer saints living and dead, uh, maybe a few new saints among us in these days of summer. I wanna conclude with the collect, as I said, for the mass of um, the Feast of St. Mary Magdalene. O oh God, whose only begotten son entrusted Mary Magdalene before all others with announcing the great joy of the resurrection, grant, we pray, that through her intercession and example, we may proclaim the living Christ and come to see him reigning in your glory as he lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. St. Mary Magdalene, pray for us. St. Anne, pray for us. St. James, pray for us.